What's up YouTube, BMR here, and today I want to give you guys a review of the Empower parts for the Mini Z all-wheel drive. So I've had these installed in my car for a few weeks now, and I've had a lot of time to test it, drift it, play with it, and I'm really happy with these parts, and I feel like I'm finally at a point that I can give you guys a full review, give you guys my thoughts and opinion, and let you guys know what I really think of these parts. I'll have links down below in the description for all the parts I have installed on the car right now. At the time of recording this, RC M8 had everything in stock, so like I said guys, links will be down below in the description if you're looking to pick up these parts. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with Empower, they make super high-end parts for the Mini Z all-wheel drive as well as the rear-wheel drive. And as far as I can tell, they have some of the best machining tolerances out of any companies in the industry. These parts are a little bit on the expensive side, definitely, no doubt. They're not cheap, but the thing is, is you're paying for quality. In my experience, when I installed these, everything fit 100% perfectly. There was zero break-in period, nothing required fitment at all, so that was great right out of the box, knowing that when you purchase these parts, you can just slap them on there and not have to worry about it. So let's actually talk about the parts themselves. Normally I work front to back, but I realize that I generally miss a couple parts in the rear end of the car by the time I get there. So I wanna actually start in the rear and work my way to the front. So right off the bat, the number one thing you guys can see on here is the shock tower and this mount. So these are two separate parts, but really these are some of the best parts. These are probably the best part for this car that you can pick up. I really, really, really am a huge fan of this rear end. Sorry for the interruption, I had to go grab this part, but like I was saying guys, this is my favorite part that Empower makes back here because of this part right here. So normally to adjust your camber angle on your tire, what you would have to do is uninstall this screw, remove this little black part right here, and then you unscrew it. And what that will do is allow you to lengthen lengthen this linkage up here and it will pull your tires out and it will decrease your camber angle. I have my tires fully pulled in right now just for the heck of it. But anyways, guys, so normally you would have to remove this screw like I said, but the Empowers, they have this little tool right here. And so what you can do is actually hook on to this little part right here and you just spin this linkage right here. And it'll allow you to adjust the camber angle because this is actually a ball in here. Normally there's a pin running through this joint on a normal DWS, but Empower went ahead and made this a ball joint. So by rotating this ball joint, you're lengthening or tightening this linkage right here and it allows you to adjust the camber angle so quickly, so easily guys. And when I first got these Empower parts, I was playing around with my camber a lot. I was messing with this car a lot and being able to play with the camber and being able to adjust it out and in like that it was so nice, so convenient convenient guys it takes you know 10 seconds to adjust your camber if you want to be like me run max camber just for the heck of it you can do that in a second and then if you want to be go back to running uh zero camber for maximum grip you can do that really quickly with this tool so guys this mounting part up here is probably the number one part for them. It's really cool. And then this shock tower over here, what this lets you do is you basically have two to three more positions for where you can mount your ball right here. And what that will do is allow you to change the angle that your shocks are sitting at. So you can either lay it in a little bit or pull it out a little bit. Sorry for bumping the camera there. But you know, it'll just give you a little bit more uh, variety with your shock positions. And I have mine installed pretty much vertical. And that's something you couldn't do with the stock DWS. You're going to have a minimum angle, a little bit minimum angle going in. So I just kind of like having it vertical. I don't think it makes a whole lot of difference for drifting. But, you know, it's just something to keep in mind. So moving on, there's only two more parts in the back here. And uh, there's that wheel hub in there. You can't really see it. And then there's this swing arm. So these parts work great, no doubt. They're really nice parts. And these nubs, these, uh, not nubs, these swing arms right here, these, it's hard to see in there, but basically these have a little set screw in there. And what that will let you do is adjust the ride height in the back. So you can either make it so that the car is sitting real low, or you can have it so that you have maximum suspension travel. I have maximum suspension travel, but what I had was... In the, initially in the beginning, um, my I didn't have the set screws and this was sitting just a hair too low. And what was happening was my dog bones right here, these uh, swing arms were super angled. So they were sitting at an angle like that and I just felt like that was too much stress on them. So I was able to raise it up just a tiny bit and make it a little bit more neutral, but I didn't want to bring it up too high and limit my suspension travel. So I have it so I, you know, I'm kind of a, a in the middle. It's a little bit of a give and a take between that angle right there and your suspension travel. So like I said, guys, I just moved it up a hair to fix the angle that these swing arms were sitting at. So I definitely recommend installing that set screw. I didn't have that initially, so I had to tear my rear end apart and then reinstall it. So just, just a little tip for you guys, but 
anyways, these wheel hubs and these swing arms, uh, they look cool. They're nice. But the thing is, is when the car is sitting on the ground, you're not really going to notice them. So if you're looking for color upgrades, you know, you're looking to make your car pretty, these things really won't do anything. They do offer durability. These things will never break on you. But the thing is, it's, I don't think this area has really too much stress naturally. So I don't think these are necessarily worth the cost of the hubs and the suspension arms. But this shock tower up here and this mount are well worth it. I absolutely love these parts. So let's move on, guys. This is a PN Racing motor clip. This is not Empower. I highly recommend these, though, since it has this grate and it'll keep you from burning your finger. Really, really nice little feature. But let's move into the front of the car and we'll talk about the front suspension because this is really probably the coolest. Uh, actually, I said this was the coolest. So this is the second coolest, but you know, it's still right up there. And it's these suspension arms. So Eagle Racing also makes a similar suspension arm, but I noticed my Eagle Racing ones had fitment issues. These ones luckily have zero fitment issues, and these come with these clear plastic springs in here, or screws in here. And what these screws do is allow you to adjust where your car will bottom out. So these screws will bottom out on your chassis before your chassis bottoms out on the floor. And that's how I have these set up. And so what that allow you to do is make it so your car won't catch since it won't bottom out. So this won't be grabbing the ground and it won't make your car spin out or act weird in a corner. So it's really cool having these since you can fine tune your suspension travel and basically make it so you have maximum travel, but you're not bottoming out on the ground. So that's really, really nice. And then moving on, they also have this front differential cover and this thing looks so cool, especially if you had a colored differential. So eventually I want to get the Shino Hobbies front one way and that will be red and silver. And then so I'll have a red and silver front one way in here and it'll just be all exposed and look really cool. So this is a skeletonized differential housing cover and I really like it. I really think this is a really cool looking thing. And then you can get in there and easily knock dust, debris, anything you see in there, cat hair, anything that's building up, you can easily access it and clean it. So it's, it's a pretty cool little upgrade. I really like it. These front knuckles are from Eagle Racing. They are not Empower parts, but you know, they're red and they went with the build. These wheel nuts are PN Racing. They are not uh, Empower, but you know, whatever. They still look good. They still look really cool. And I think it really goes with the build. And then up front, these are just some medium soft suspension uh, springs. So that's pretty much it. Those are the parts. I really think these are all great parts. I think they work really, really well together. And oh, the weight. So one thing a lot of people say with aluminum upgrade parts is don't upgrade your part to aluminum because it's going to add a lot of weight to your car. And that is false with these things. So I believe it was 1.65 grams up front is what I added. And then I think it was about one and a half to maybe two grams of weight that I added in the rear. I'm going to have to go ahead and check that. I have it written down somewhere and I can leave a link. And I'll tell you guys down in the description below exactly what the weight difference was between the front and the back. But either way, guys, you're adding three grams total for all this aluminum, all this aluminum for three grams. That is a bargain. So you're really not impacting the weight of the car. You're not impacting the balance. It's not like it's going to throw anything off, but you are getting the durability upgrade from aluminum. These parts aren't going to snap on you and they look super fresh. I mean, I think this thing looks really good, especially once I get that, rump, that front one way installed in here, this thing is just going to look mean. So Anyways, guys, that's about it for the Empower parts. If you guys have any questions at all, go ahead, leave them down below. Don't hesitate to ask me anything about these parts. You know, we can go from there. Like I said, guys, it comes with this little tool. So if you see this in your Empower parts box, do not throw this thing away. It's how you adjust your camber. So uh, really cool, nifty little part. Really like it. Really innovative. So uh, Empower, they get five stars in my book. I really like them. I highly suggest them. And... You know, that's going to be it for this video, guys. So if you're enjoying the content I'm producing on this channel, please smash that subscribe button and show your support. I'd really appreciate it. And hope you guys have a wonderful day. See you next time.